Hello fellow Earthlings, my name is Rogan and I am the mysterious stoner in Ebola. And if you're watching this episode, you've probably seen some of my other videos by now. And if that's the case, thanks for sticking around. I realize these ain't the best videos you've probably ever seen. And clearly, I have never done this sort of thing before. So thank you for being patient. Thank you for sticking around and hearing me out and coming back to hear more of my tale. So my family had become missionaries, right? We'd moved over to a new country and everything. And I explained previously that missionaries, you know, if, if this is your first video, missionaries are people who leave their home country and go to a foreign country to spread their personal religion. It's all they do. I mean, they, they might get a job. While they're there, they might not. They might have people supporting them uh, from home. A bunch of churches might be sending them money to support them in the, in the foreign country. But, uh, but yeah, that's what missionaries do. They, they live to spread their religion. So I explained that previously, um, but in this video, I'm going to share with you exactly how we did that, the, the specific work that we did and that we were involved in. So when we first got there, we worked with a bunch of other missionaries, most of whom were short term. They weren't going to be there that long, um, but uh, some of them were. And uh, we worked together to rent out theaters and auditoriums, and um, we would hold uh, preaching events there. Uh, we call them crusades. I, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but we called them uh, crusades, uh, and uh, we would pass out pamphlets and uh, also gospel tracts uh, in mass to people and uh, tell people that there would be free stuff at this event if they came and stayed for the whole thing. Now, if you don't know what gospel tracts are. They're basically uh, little books designed to convert people to whatever religion the little book is about. It's usually like, it's like, it's really small. And uh, sometimes they have like little comic book stories written into them. And uh, yeah, like they got gospel verses and everything. And like I said, all designed to catch your eye and uh, try to convert you. Bit of backstory. This particular country, well, it used to have its own religion a long time ago. But they had, uh, they had banned religion, all religion, for an extensive amount of time. And the time we showed up was right after they lifted that ban of all religions. And this country's original, I guess you could say, religion. It wasn't Catholic, but it was similar to Catholicism, and so they had Bibles too. And so, this, this actually helped uh, make us very popular over there. And we had lots of people show up to our events. And Giving away free stuff was also unheard of. So giving away free stuff and we were giving away Bibles as well. And so that made it an even bigger deal. We had people coming in swarms in some places. Like like the, the men in the group could not give out Bibles fast enough. It was, it got crazy sometimes. There was even the time my dad and a few other guys were standing on a platform and were handing out Bibles to people. There were people crowded all around the platform. And they were all reaching up to, to get Bibles. 
and uh, you know, and they were like reaching and grabbing, and uh, they grabbed my dad's pants and pulled him down, like, and he managed to catch him before they went all the way, but um, yeah, that's how that's how desperate people were for free stuff and for for having religion back in that country. We did this on repeat everywhere we went in this foreign country that we had decided to go to. We would have uh, Christian Bibles and literature uh, in, the, in the foreign country's language printed and shipped in from our home country. Uh, we had contacts with Christian companies uh, that uh, uh, had donations coming in from churches uh, to print Christian literature to send to us. And uh, we'd ship them to where we were going. We rented out warehouses. We um, uh, loaded uh, the Bibles in, in boxes and the trucks and everything. Um, yeah, we had uh, we had we had the works pretty much. So that was the next year or two of my life. I was going around a foreign country, being involved with this missionary stuff, being homeschooled on the road, in between, and never staying in one place for very long. Kind of living like a gypsy. It was, I mean, yeah, it was an adventure. It was crazy. You never know where you were going next, but you know what? Because I was so young at the time, that was... I didn't know what it meant to be normal. I didn't know what a normal life was like, and to me... This was kind of a normal thing. So, uh, after the year or two of this, we eventually did settle down. And um, we actually stayed settled for, for a good bit at a time anyways. Because we moved a few more times. But uh, we eventually settled. Uh, we got enough uh, converts together to create a few churches within our own particular denomination. So my dad and the other Christian men, and the, uh, well, the missionary men and the Christian converts, uh, worked together to uh, form church services. We didn't have our own church. We had to rent a place out, sometimes in a theater, sometimes, in a, sometimes even in a restaurant that happened to be closed on a Sunday. Or we would meet in our apartment, in uh, another missionary's apartment, or uh, another Christian convert's apartment. Yeah, uh, everyone had apartments. Almost no one lived in the regular house in this country. By the time we had settled down and were living in our own apartment, most of the other missionaries had left. And while the majority of us were staying in the same city or same area, uh, there were a few scattered in other cities here and there. So, we didn't just stop and focus on our churches, though. We still did outreach here and there, and we went to groups of uh, Christian converts that lived a little ways away that we would go visit about once a month or so, or once every other week. We also went to a few different orphanages here and there, and we would have Sunday school-type meetings with the kids and of course we continued to pass out christian literature everywhere we went sometimes we would make an event out of it we would just go out and do it as a family um but uh we would especially do it if there was an event going on uh, a local holiday or something like that someplace uh, some something we could go attend uh, if we could go on a tour somewhere, we usually had gospel treks with us that we'd be passing out as we were going. And we went on a lot of tours, and we, we did see quite a bit of unique stuff. Museums, gardens, palaces, submarines, festivals of all kinds, all kinds of light shows, airplane shows. Uh, is, I've, I've seen so much shit. I cannot, there's no fucking way I can remember it all because of how much stuff I have seen. When I wasn't with my dad on any of these excursions, 
then I was being homeschooled at home. And that was the majority of my childhood while in the foreign country. And I did spend the majority of my childhood over there, but some of that time we did go back to my home country because we had to renew our visas every one or two years. So whenever we had to renew them, we went back home and it was not a vacation from the mission field. In fact, in some ways it was a bit more strenuous than being on the mission field. Now, my parents did have a place. They owned a house. Uh, in fact, they still own it. And uh, they, they've always been renting it out. But uh, we would never stay there when we went back to our home country. We would uh, instead travel around our home country to different churches that were sending us our money, uh, send, sending us their money to support us. And we would, uh, well, my dad had uh, pictures that were turned into slides. Uh, this, it, it's a, a very old school concept. Uh, you may not have heard, heard of it because this isn't, uh, when I say slideshow, I'm not talking about with the computer. It's, a, it's an actual projector that would project pictures on a wall. You had to turn the lights off. To see the pictures and everything and the pictures were uh, processed turned into these little slides and the slides were shown had light shown through them on a wall and everything it was it, it was quite the event uh, and we would uh, show these slides and my dad would preach at every church almost every single Sunday so I heard a lot of the same sermons over and over again when I got older, I got to operate the slide projector though, so that was kind of cool. Um, although my dad would sometimes embarrass me and have me get up and, and quote uh, scripture in the in the language of the country we were we were visiting. That was a. Uh, I was never a big fan of being made a spect spectacle of like that. But uh, you know, you know, you don't have a choice in in the in my folks' house. And when it came to friends, well, living like this, I, I did. I I really didn't get a chance to make that many. I, I had a few back in the foreign country, believe it or not. I had a few missionary friends uh, who were kind of close to my age, but not really on. Not, not really my exact same age. They were either uh, several years older than me, like uh, they were teenagers and I was, you know, six or seven, or they would be, or you know, I would be like, you know, eight or nine and they'd be five or six. So it was, I was never, I never really had friends my age. I had a few friends of uh, 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 local friends um, in the foreign country but uh, I didn't have them for very long and we didn't really we weren't really able to communicate that well they didn't know a lot of English I didn't know a lot of their language and so that was that that made things rather difficult and eventually my family would move and or Something would happen, and I just I would never see them again. And uh, eventually, uh, the missionary kids uh, uh, they moved on, or their families moved on, and um, so I I rare I rarely had more than two or three friends at a time. In fact, I don't think I ever had more than three friends at a time. And then traveling from church to church. Um, I I made friends at first. It wasn't it wasn't difficult for me at first to make friends. Um, I had no problem going off to Sunday school and shit like that uh, during church services, and and making friends. But eventually, 
as the years went on and you know we would go to some of the same churches but you know a whole year apart from seeing the same kids you know you've you've had a lot of time to change and sometimes they're not even there or, or you don't even go to that church next time you go back to to your home country and so you don't even get to see them and eventually it got to the point to where I didn't even I didn't even try because I wasn't gonna see mostly anyone ever again and I even stopped going to Sunday school before I was too old to go I was I was staying in with the adults with the main sermons and shit because I was sick and tired of going to the Sunday school and plus I was I was learning to under understand adults better from spending so much time I mean we would stay with we typically stayed with uh, people who went to the churches who uh, they wouldn't necessarily have kids uh, more than half the time they didn't have kids so a lot of my life I spent almost entirely around adults I spent very little time around kids my age as you can imagine that put a major stunt on my social skills in fact they're still pretty stunted but that's another topic for another time and speaking of time that is all I have for today. So, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, consider sharing. It means a lot. And stay safe. I will see you in the next video. And until next week, farewell.